Manufacturing semiconductors is a complex and lengthy process with many unique processing steps. In the next few minutes, we'll give you an overview of what happens during the manufacturing process. While only scratching the surface of what's involved, you'll get insight into how complex and time-consuming it is to manufacture semiconductors. Here we show the major inputs prior to manufacturing that then lead to the steps done by NXP. At the most basic level, silicon is needed to create a wafer substrate as a platform on which to build up the semiconductor chip. The process starts with sand, harvested from preferred locations for its purity. Then it's melted down into pure silicon in order to build an ingot. Ingots are cylindrical objects built from silicon and sourced from several manufacturers. We use different sizes and types of wafers from different ingots depending on the specific fab process. These ingots are sawn into a perfectly round wafer substrate and blank wafers are used as the platform on which we build up the wafer with many dye on each. At the highest level, we think of semiconductor manufacturing as a front-end process we call fab and a back-end process which typically involves wafer test, assembly, and final testing. This chart indicates the flow and cycle times for a typical semiconductor. There are many different flows depending on the product, but this represents the most typical flow. First, there is FAB, the longest and most complex of the processing steps, ranging from 8 to 28 weeks in length. The back-end part of the process is typically quicker, but has potentially more factories and transits involved in the completion of the semiconductor chips. As you can see, the back-end cycle time can range from 4 to 10 weeks. These cycle times are generic and vary based on the number of layers and or back-end steps required. Therefore, you see a wide range for each family of chips. Cycle times should not be considered equal to lead time because lead time is dependent on the supply and demand situation. Lead times can become extremely long when demand exceeds capacity and a backlog of orders queue prior to fab loading. Diving one level deeper into the fab processing, this manufacturing requires a clean room environment with operators completely smocked up in protective gear to avoid contaminating the wafers or equipment. From the raw silicon substrate, a wafer will flow from machine to machine as defined by the recipe for that specific semiconductor. Think of these steps as building up layers on top of each other to define specific patterns through design that achieve a working solid-state device. Once the fab processing is complete, we have a wafer with many dye on it, which can then be passed on to the back-end processing steps. One key concept to understand is that semiconductors do not go through a linear processing flow in the fab. They will spend their time rotating through a series of very expensive tools as these layers are built up on top of each other. This layering on top of the wafer can happen more than 50 times on some of the more complex semiconductor products, and each layer requires many steps to create that specific layer. This speaks to why the processing cycle times are so long in the fab. Once out of the fab, the process becomes more linear with wafer test, dye, assembly, and final test to create the final chip. Diving a level deeper into one specific fab processing step, here we show the photolithography process. This is just one of the many steps required to do each layer on the wafer. First, the wafer is coated with a material called photoresist. A reticle containing an image that is specific to that layer of the chip is reflected onto the wafer by exposure to light to create the precise pattern needed. This reticle or mask may contain 2 to 10 individual dye images and then must be stepped across the entire wafer until the pattern has filled all the available space. From this step, the wafer will move to subsequent steps that will clean the wafer to expose that layer's pattern and get it ready for additional steps. This very complicated process is one of many steps required to create just one layer of the wafer, and many products have over 50 layers to be processed. After the fab process, the wafers will enter the back-end processing steps. These steps can vary widely depending on the type of semiconductor package. 
but this chart depicts a typical packaged semiconductor flow. The flow will start with wafer test, then back grind, die sing, die mount, wire bond, molding, deflash trim and form, final test, and then finally packaging in either trays or tape and reel. In some cases, these process steps can happen all in one facility. But more often, the product will need to transit to several different factories that specialize in each of the various production steps. This map provides an overview of the different front-end factories and foundries we use, along with back-end sites and outsourced semiconductor assembly and test sites, so-called OSATs. These sites are situated globally which often requires transit between sites to complete the different processing steps. Most of the back-end sites are situated in Asia, whereas the front-end sites are spread out globally. NXP maintains a mix of internal and external sites to optimize our manufacturing footprint. We have five NXP fab sites and one joint venture site in SSMC Singapore. NXP also maintains four back-end manufacturing sites along with many OSAT sites. You may ask, why are there so many sites? The reason is the wide range of different products NXP is offering. Unique characteristics and performance levels of a chip may require very specific processes. Within NXP alone, we have more than 100 different fab process technologies running in parallel. This chart illustrates the difference between a standard linear manufacturing flow and a pod-based flow. Most of our customers run a linear flow, and this whirlpool of processing steps in the pod-based approach is unfamiliar. The other key concept is to think about the funnel of demands entering the manufacturing process. Depending on the mix of products and the number of layers required, the capacity of the system changes. When demand exceeds capacity, as in the funnel is not big enough for the products being demanded, there is a queue of orders in the funnel prior to the beginning of wafer processing. Customers will often ask, why don't you just add more capacity tomorrow so we can get more throughput? Unfortunately, it's not that easy. As we have discussions with customers to explain what happens in the semiconductor supply chain, there seems to be a lack of understanding on the cycle times required along with inventory risks involved. The top chart shows what we see as the ordering and forecasting window between OEMs, Tier 1s, semiconductor manufacturers, and semiconductor foundries. Notice that the window gets longer as you step down the chain. The order windows between OEMs and Tier 1s can be just a few weeks. Because the semiconductor cycle time is on average six months long, NXP must generally place orders six months ahead of expected delivery. And in addition, the current environment suggests semiconductor manufacturers must secure wafer fab capacity for multiple years with their foundry partners. Next, if you look at the chart on the bottom, you'll see the mismatch in cycle times and inventory being carried. OEMs and Tier 1s tend to manage the factories with a just-in-time methodology, which pushes all demand fluctuations downstream to semiconductor manufacturers. The net-net of this arrangement puts the risk of inventory and obsolescence on companies like NXP and does not share the burden of holding inventory across the entire supply chain. To promote a healthy supply chain, the risk of capacity utilization and inventory needs to be spread out more evenly across all parties. Back to the topic of adding capacity. Due to the extremely complex manufacturing process requiring highly specialized equipment and a rigorous qualification process, adding capacity can take a very long time. In addition to the pure cycle times shown at the top, Adding capacity to an already existing fab clean room can still take 18 to 24 months before realizing that additional capacity. These are specialty tools made to order with very long lead times, approaching one year in many cases. Then there is the install, calibration, and quality checkoff before the processing can even begin. Similarly, 
If an existing fab wants to expand a clean room at an existing site, this can take up to two years before realizing the additional capacity. For a new factory, such as the TSMC proposed Chandler fab, the publicly available projections for that fab are five years to build at a cost of $35 billion. Because of the expense, these factories must run 24 by 7 by 365 in order to be cost competitive. We hope this overview helped to explain the complexity of semiconductor manufacturing, including why cycle times are so long and why adding capacity is such a time-consuming and expensive process for companies like NXP to manage. For more information, please contact your NXP representative.